start, yeah? Sure. Yep. Okay. Hello, everybody, in particular, Wayne, Pratik, and who has been participating, Dippin. Here we are live, intuitive simulation and measurement workflow for hardware engineers. My name is Tim Wang Lee. I recently got my PhD degree from University of Colorado in Boulder under Dr. Eric Bogatin, the SI guru. Um, Mike will be presenting in the second half of the presentation and he will for sure introduce himself then. And we're both signal integrity application scientists at Keysight Technologies. Without further ado, we will go to the first slide. Now I'm gonna, I wanna get to know everybody a little bit. So maybe in the Q and A, you can say whether you identify as a layout engineer, a hardware design engineer, or maybe an, an SI person, signal integrity SI person. Oh, in chat, let's see, Do in, in the Q and A, you just type in the answers. Do you, yeah. Okay, we can we can do the Q and A. All right, so Wayne is a hardware designer. Hardware, okay. You and so on. Okay. Okay, so majority of us are are hardware slash some SIs. So that's great. And I, I believe that given and thanks, Philip, given that we are aware there will be a simulation as always because for the lay from the layout perspective you start out with the board design in your altium or your cadence or your uh, eagle then you have to go through the board design phase to get to your virtual prototype that's your your board design and then once you do that you have to connect with Sierra circuits to make the board. Then after the board has been made, you have to do some physical layer test and measurement with instruments. So we have the virtual prototype and the prototype. And the great news is Keysight, as well as in partnership with Sierra circuits, we make a really good partners because not only do we have timely feedback, we can also increase the productivity once you have the virtual prototype and prototype together. Now, as you know, Sierra Circuit has made great circuit boards with high precision, and they provide a lot of great webinars like this one and free tools online. So make sure you check them out. Now, today's learning, they are threefold. First is we're going to take a look at the PCIe Gen 3 traces and learn about the root causes and fixes for impedance discontinuity, return loss, and insertion loss, and how to, how to fix them. And then Mike will, will then look at these very interesting connectors and talk about the case studies of PCI Gen 6, PAM4I diagram, and multi-domain analysis. All right. So first, well, how do you fix an unexpected differential impedance? Before we go there, I want to, you to think about this PCIe Gen 3. If you have experience designing it, there are three choices. What, which impedance would pass the spec? Is it the 71.2, 85, or the 91.5? So in your mind, have an idea. All right. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because everybody is right. We are all winners today. Because in the spec, it actually says the differential data trace, it ranges from 68 to 105. So all, all these in the range will work just fine. However, say if you have eight different differential pairs, it will be kind of silly to have one that is 68, 69, 60, uh, 70, 71, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's kind of silly to do that. So we have this one impedance to rule them all situation where all of them are going to be 91.5. So then the trace width and the spacing would be the same for all of them. Now next, I'm going to show you a quick demo on how to, to find something when with the, with EP scan. So usually what you will see is a, a layout board file like this. And how do we find whether a PCIe traces the impedance is, is wrong? 
what I'll do is usually I'll bring in now bring it in into electrical performance scan to do that. Let's see. So we'll, we all navigate to desktop, EP scan demo. So this one is board one, and I'll create it for. So as the board is importing, we will look for the PCIe traces. All right, so we have to enter the substrate stack up. And right now, the loss model is frequency dependent because I want I want a really quick answer. We do have we do have a frequency dependent loss model. And now here I will type in PCIe TX zero to seven. That's I know their names. And now I'll select all of them. And then P. So select all of them drag them now and since since i have a spec ready i'll analyze it to the tx demo spec and once i click run in two minutes or maybe not two minutes maybe it's 30 seconds we'll find out that uh look at here px tci tx4 is different than all the other ones it's 104 instead of 91. So that's the uh, that's our demo. So we'll have a differential impedance that is different. All right. So recap. We we did analysis on these PCIe Gen 3 traces and we found a different differential impedance in the layout. Now what we're gonna do is look at what the parameters and with their impact on the differential pair, differential impedance. So we have two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, 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 well, by the width is the same. So four different parameters. We have width, spacing, substrate height, and dielectric constant. Well, what we'll do is I'm gonna, I wrote down some equations here, did my homework, and we can look a little closer on the relationship, but I'll first simplify it. The differential impedance is proportional to the substrate height over a decay and width. What this means is that if we increase the substrate height, the differential impedance would increase. If we decrease the spacing, the differential impedance would decrease. And the same way, if we decrease the width, since it's inverse proportional, the impedance would increase. If we decrease the dielectric constant, the differential impedance would increase. All right, so that's what I, here's a summary of what, what I've said so far. Now, how do we fix it? We know the impedance is higher and let's see what the problem looks like. Discard. So over here, we can look right now in the 104, the width is 4.72 and the spacing is 5.91. If we want to make this impedance lower, that means we will decrease the spacing, right? And let's see, let's go, let's go to this one. In, oh, indeed. So from 5.91, we change it to 4.72. And the same way from 4.72, increase the spacing to lower the impedance, 5.91. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? No questions in the Q&A? Good. All right, so we found our reason to do a quick recap because the only thing that I was changing between all these A traces will be the either the width or the spacing. They're on the same substrate and dielectric constant. To decrease it, we, we concluded that we can make the trace width a little wider, increase the trace width, and the trace spacing narrower. And that's exactly what we did as a summary here. 104, the trace width is 4.7, and we increase the width to decrease the impedance. And for the spacing, we decrease the spacing. And from, from this, 
from this table, you can kind of see that, well, maybe someone entered the dimensions re in, in the wrong order. But this will be a quick way to bring up your board and just do a quick check very quickly. 